Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. Yesterday, I shared with you a little sneak peek of my new Bigfoot Beast of the North documentary project that I'm working on. And today I'm gonna to show you a little sneak peek of the next Supernatural Sasquatch documentary, Supernatural Sasquatch Part 3. Uh, I was in Calgary recently doing an interview with Ashley Veenstra for that film. And Ashley has had quite a few incredible encounters with these Sasquatch beings. And so she had a lot to say. We had a really good interview and it was really interesting hearing her stories. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, they get a little weird and crazy, but they were interesting nonetheless. And you know, I'm really excited for that film to be complete so I can share it with you in its entirety. I'll just say that Ashley has had multiple close face-to-face -face encounters with Sasquatch. I was actually able to see them and get a relatively decent photo of one. Um, so stay tuned to the end of the video, the very end, to catch a glimpse of that image, which will be discussed more in the film. I hope you guys enjoy this little sneak peek of the interview. We're going to get into that after a quick message about our sponsor. This episode of Mountain Beast Mysteries is brought to you by Audible. Audible has the largest collection of audiobooks and podcasts on the internet. There's thousands of titles for you to choose from on any topic you can imagine, including Sasquatch. And that's why we're all here. We're into the Sasquatch topic. So... If you're into that, if you want to get some more Bigfoot content, if you want to have something to listen to late at night, if you want to be creeped out, go to audibletrial.com slash mountainbeast, sign up for the free 30-day trial, and you'll get a free audiobook. You'll get one credit to put towards any audiobook of your choice. I recommend Sasquatch, The Legend Meets Science by Jeff Meldrum, but there's a whole bunch of other books. And books on other topics like UFOs and ghosts. So go to audibletrial.com slash mountainbeast. There's a link down below in the description. When I first went out there, I was pretty shocked to see that I you know, had an encounter like right away when I got out there. So that was really like, now that I look back on it, it was really honoring. I mean, I, I hear people don't even have encounters their whole life doing research. So I was unaware of this at the time. However, I went out there and um, it was about like 9 or 10 at night, it was really late, it was completely dark when we went out there. And there was like a fire going, um, I just met someone, drove back up there, there was a fire going, the trailer was set up, we got there and we sat by the fire and um, the researcher I was with was just talking and I could hear like, like in the background I could hear like howling and like, um, like gorilla calls almost, like it was in between a little bit of both of them and I was like I actually thought there were more like howls but I was just like do you hear that and then um, he's like oh no and he was quiet and then he could hear it so yeah we could hear two two Sasquatch kind of calling from like one mountaintop to the other mountaintop and I call one of the mountains like Sasquatch Mountain and I call the other one Spirit Mountain so I've actually like literally named them um, but they were calling each other from like one mountaintop to the other mountaintop and like different heights one was a uh, one was like a lot bigger than the other one and the other one was like either younger or female or I'm not quite sure but they were calling each other and then I was totally freaked out <laughs> I was totally freaked out so I kind of uh, went to bed early so I was like okay I'm just gonna go to bed gonna be safe in the trailer I don't really know what to expect and so that night when I was sleeping I was having troubles kind of like resting myself to get to sleep and when I was, so I was in the back bunk bed and I finally could like settle my, it was like my energy was all over the place. And so when I finally settled myself to get to sleep, I was sleeping, I heard like through the back of the trailer, like, cause the trailer's pretty low. So you got the bunk beds, the trailer's pretty low. I heard like out the back of this corner, um, like a little baby Sasquatch come and it was like, made this yee, like it was a weird yee sound and just like popped up I just like immediately woke up too, like boom, was awake. And there was just little tiny Sasquatch head in my window. And it, I mean, it was like short, like the, the trailer was about here to the ground. So either it was crouching down or it was a really tiny Sasquatch. And it was just like peeking, like his perfectly round head, like black face, had black, completely black eyes. The, uh, the whites were covered, completely round little fuzzy face. And it was just like staring around like at everything in the trailer. Like you could see his eyes kind of going. And then it like seen me and the, it looked at me like this and I just got so freaked out. Like my adrenaline literally flew, flew up in my body. 
and then all this, and I pulled my sleeping bag over my head. Then it like, just all of a sudden settled. Like all of a sudden, I just got a calm in my body, which I thought was really weird. Like I don't know if they did it or I did it or the connection just like, I don't know, but that was weird. So I just got a calm in my body and then I put the sleeping bag down again and it was still there. And then I went up and oh, I had a flashlight and I was about to flash it the first time. And he heard it click and that's how he looked at me. So he heard this click and yeah. So I didn't click the flashlight on because I'm like, God forbid I flash the flashlight and the Sasquatch freaks out. Um, so then I yelled the researcher's name and um, yeah, so then didn't wake up. So it, I was kind of freaked out, like not gonna move in the trailer. I don't know if this thing's gonna come flying through the trailer at me. Um, I don't want to shine a light in his face. So I just literally like just sat quietly like underneath my sleeping bag. However, I looked at it three times and it was like, the first time I was freaked out, my adrenaline went up. Second time I was just like looking at it and it just like was sitting there. And I just realized that they were not animals. Like I was expecting to go out to be re researching kind of like you'd go research a bear or you would see like an elk grazing or something. So, cause I had no idea what the Sasquatch were all about, right? Um, so I was just like right away, I like knew instantly that they were just people and that there were, there were beings and they were a lot like us, like the way that they observe, the way that they move, their speaking, like it was just like, I was just amazed. So then all of a sudden it disappeared and I had a feeling that it was gonna go to the front window after that. And um, so in the morning I was like, don't get out of the trailer. Let's not leave any footprints. Let's not like, you know, like let's not mess it up anything. And like, let's literally like go investigate what happened outside the trailer. So we did, we found fingerprints on the windows. We found a footprint that we had covered up. And um, what else did we, oh, we found branches, little tiny branches that was thrown at the back of the trailer. So we found all these like little funny things around the trailer. So we actually used that for the Mysteries Decoded episode, all of that. So we just like covered up the track and the window. Yeah, it was really amazing. So that was like my very, very first encounter with them. And then it just, I mean, it just, the summer just got crazier after that. <laughs> you can be physical and you can be like energy. It's just a lighter energy, right? So I was kind of blown away, but I had a ceremony in the trees um, where I had to work myself up to doing this because I was pretty freaked out about going into the trees in the dark with the Sasquatch. But my shaman said, you know, like try to um, remove yourself from the fire and go out to the trees because they would sit in the tree line around the fire. You know, I'd have six Sasquatch and we'd look at our, uh, my night monocular and we could see them, me and my friend Ather. So we were just sitting by the fire, we could see them. So it was pretty cool. So we were like, okay, so like now, how do we get them to join us here? So remove fire, right? Cause they don't use fire. Um, so we, I eventually worked myself up to being brave enough to sitting in the trees, turning off my flashlight, showing them my flashlight was underneath the blanket, sitting and I would put like little napkins around and with their favorite little snacks, like they like nuts and some nut chocolate I have and coconut macaroons and I've built up trust with them for three three months so now we're moving on four months so it's like sitting around and putting these napkins and you know I'm sitting there and I can hear them all like running down the riverbanks and all of a sudden I just can't like hear anything anymore like not their big booming footsteps it's just dead quiet I'm like this it's like a, it's like a daunting quiet you know all I can hear is the river I can see the moon like, you know, your eyes kind of adjust to the darkness. And I'm kind of like, what is going on right now, right? So all of a sudden I see like, like I'm like looking, all of a sudden I can just see like a silhouette. Like how I explain it is Harry Potter when he wears that cloak. And you can like see a body silhouette, right? But you can't really like see anything. And it's like a, a clear little silhouette of something. And then it goes and you can see it sitting cross-legged. There's like perfectly like sitting cross-legged, right all around the napkin. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like these things can go invisible, right? So then I started like 
you know, touching and trying to feel them and stuff like that. And I couldn't feel anything, but they were touching me. Like they would touch my hair. I had them touch my shoulders and stuff. It's like they were letting me know they were there and I could see rocks flipping. Like they would, you know, rock flip or a tree would like whip all of a sudden. And they're like, like, we're here. Like we are right here. Yeah. So it's like, they were giving me all the evidence that they're there. Like it was like, it was so neat. So, and sometimes I could see like, a, I call it like a cloak but like a cloak or something open up where you could see like dark, like black, like a black leg or something. And I was so, I thought it was so crazy. So I got out, I'm like, oh my God. And I was hiking with, or doing an expedition with my friend, Daniel. So I was like, Daniel, you need to come see this because I think I'm going crazy. So he comes out and he's like, oh yeah, like I see them. Like they're there, they're there, they're there. And when he came out, there was one that went half cloaked behind a tree, like literally from here to there, like, probably around about eight to nine feet away from us, was half cloaked behind a tree going like this, uh, in and out, and his eyes were just bright green, just glowing green. Like, you know, I see them in the, all the time in the dark, but to see one like that close in the dark was amazing, right? And so like just peeking, but he was half cloaked, so we could kind of see it, like it was, it was weird.